Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session today, Teach English with the Power of Stories. It's an honor to have you here on the first webinar of 2023. Um, yes, today we're going to talk about storytelling, how you can spice up your English classes with stories. And I can see that so many of you joined. I do see uh, some familiar names, but I do see a lot of new ones too, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, I was wondering if any of you, I mean, I just uh, spoiled it a bit, but I was wondering if any of you already visited any of our webinars, maybe in 2022 or even before. Uh, let us know in the chat box. Oh yeah, or yeah, you can actually do a uh, hands up too. That's very cool. <laughs> You can also just use the raise hand uh, button. Six of you at least. Very good. So today we're gonna start from scratch. So everyone uh, who's here will learn a lot about, um, about us, about storytelling and about yeah, Booker class as well. Before we start, let me share a few information about today's webinar. First of all, as you can see, we are recording the event, which means that you will be able to rewatch it if you'd like or uh, share it with your colleagues uh, if you think they would be interested. Uh, you submitted quite a few questions in your registration form, which we tried to answer during the session. It really helped us a lot in our preparation. So thank you so much. We really tried to put together everything we want to say uh, based on the questions. But also, if you have any questions during the session, then don't hesitate to ask us. There is this Q&A uh, button uh, down on the bottom of the screen. Click on that and feel free to ask any questions. And then either during the session or at the end of the session, we will definitely spend 10, 15 or even 20 minutes answering them. Uh, so before we kick off, uh, you already, uh, many of you already said hi to us from the different places of the of the world, but we would love to know where you are from. Uh, so let us know in the chat box where you're watching us from. Maybe you're by your morning coffee. I could see some people from Latin America and Central America. Yeah, Paraguay, <laughs> Guatemala, that's very early there. And uh, and yeah, the other side, Singapore. Honduras, wow, Indonesia. Okay, this I think this is my favorite part of the entire webinar. It's a bit like traveling around the world. Super exciting. We are based in, uh, in Hungary, in Budapest. We have partners all over the world. Many of you listened or uh, checked in today. South Africa living in Dubai. Romania, Iran lives in Turkey. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I know that for some of you, it's super early. It's for some of you, it's quite late. Uh, for us, it's just uh, afternoon coffee time in Hungary. Uh, so I am your host today. My name is Anna Boadok and I work for Booker uh, for a long time. And I've been working on this product called Booker Class for uh, four or five years, ever since we started working on it with Kinga, who I also invited today. At the moment, I'm responsible for customer success. So for uh, making you uh, users and our partners happy uh, to understand what you like about uh, this solution and what uh, you need uh, to make your teaching as uh, good as possible. But before that, I was also working on product development and content development and so on. And I have uh, Kinga with me here today, who's uh, responsible for our curriculum and content. So I will ask Kinga to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you all here today. Uh, I'm really happy we're having this webinar and we can share some information with you and you can share some experiences with us. Um, originally, I'm an English teacher. I am still working as an English teacher part time and I'm a content and curriculum designer at Booker Class. I've been here since the start of the application. Uh, so Anna and me have been colleagues for five, more than five years now. And I'm really, really excited about this whole project we're working on. At the uh, company at Booker Class, I'm responsible for the books in our library, the games that follow these stories, the story writing and editing partly, 
and uh, the extra materials we prepare for our teachers and the webinars and sometimes even some conferences. Um, and uh, at school, I right now I work in an elementary school part time, but I used to work in a high school um, and uh, my three greatest passions are like uh, improving the students um, personality, how to be more empathetic, how to be more open minded, more communicative. The second one is digitalization. I think that's a normal thing to say in the 21st century, especially after COVID. And the third one is stories and books. So this is what I would like to talk a bit about today with the help of Anna. Thank you, Kinga. So yes, actually, we kind of concluded what we are going to talk about today. Uh, so the main topic is how to efficiently implement stories, storytelling and story time into teaching in general and specifically into English teaching. Kinga will share some best practices and some personal recommendations. We actually also count on your personal recommendations. So we will try to make this session somewhat interactive because we know that uh, you have yeah, you have so much knowledge in the audience and we would love uh, you to share that. And uh, when we had an overview of how you can use stories, then I am going to introduce you Booker class, which I really think that can help you in uh, in your teaching. So Kinga, the floor is yours now. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to start with um, my first experience with books. I had some storytelling uh, sessions at university where we learned how to use storybooks, picture books, historical uh, stories um, in the classroom. And I was really enthusiastic about it. So I would like to show you how I started using stories with my, with my elementary school students. The very first book I used, I think, if I remember correctly, was Click Clack Moo, Cows That Type. And the two things I loved about this book is the visuals, the illustrations, and the story itself. And what is great about it is that it was easy to show the students when we had this storytelling session because the pictures are big enough. And as you can see, the book is quite thin <laughs> and uh, the texts are not too long, but actually when I read it to them, I had to simplify the text while reading. So it was a bit challenging at first and I needed to think ahead what parts I need to explain and simplify a bit because this is actually for native readers and native speakers, not graded. Um, it's not a graded book, but this one is definitely one that the students enjoyed. Uh, nine, ten year olds, they were, as far as I remember. Uh, another book uh, which I chose just for the sake of reading together, and I think this is also a fantastic one. You read to me, I read to you. And this is actually uh, very short classic stories. So they are rewritten in a format that you need two or three students to read it together and they are rhymes so it's easy to chant as well and uh, I just actually showed them the book and copied some sentences and I asked them to read together and they enjoyed it a lot because as you can see it's not long but it's fun and they already know the story so they can rely on their uh, knowledge and as, as well as the understanding of the text itself. So this one is also a wonderful source and this is really for making students feel enthusiastic about reading which is very important and if you do it in the classroom they will probably be more motivated to do the, that at home. So you can do that as well with the books. You just divide them into different parts and make them read it together as a group work basically uh, and the last one it's maybe a bit more boring because it's grammar focused but the story is so sweet it is if you take a mouse to the movies and this is first conditional so um you start with the first part of the book if you take a mouse to the movies he'll ask for some popcorn then you give him some popcorn what will happen and you can encourage your students to guess the following um, idea. 
what might come next. So this is actually a very communicative way of reading a book together. Uh, but this one also uh, is a nice um, source to use. Uh, and I have another one from the internet I really liked, Oscar Penguin's new penguin suit, which is really cute. It's about healthy eating and how that little fluffy, puffy, chubby penguin cannot fit into <laughs> the new suit he wants uh, and he needs to go on a diet and it's also about food uh, some any and uh, of course the food pyramid and what a healthy diet looks like so as you can see some books are really for reading some are for gra are grammar focused other ones are really um, fun reading sessions for fun reading sessions but they are very, very difficult to find. And sometimes they are quite expensive. These ones I found at the flea market because I'm really um, enthusiastic about finding treasures. Uh, but I'm really happy that right now we are working on an application that can provide graded readers for free in a mess, actually, because finding books for students uh, who are learning English is not, not an easy job. So um, I have these three here. Please share your ideas. What are the stories you use in the classroom? Comment in the chat section, please, so that we can share the titles. Maybe you can take notes even. If you can add the age group you use, the story with, that would be the most useful because these were for my primary school students but maybe you have some for kindergartners or maybe you have some for high schoolers. The Ugly Duckling, right. And while you are sharing your ideas, I think I'm going to jump to my presentation because I have got some slides for you. Thank you very much for the ideas. The Day the Crayons Quit, I love that book. That is so funny. I couldn't get it just now, but that is, yeah. Definitely a good one. Um, the Lion and the Mouse, a good old classic. Mm -hmm. yeah, row, row, row your boat. Songs and karaoke, thank you. I feel like you might have seen Booker Class already. <laughs> mm -hmm. Row the boat, yeah. I had the mm -hmm. uh, I had boys who went uh, rowing, like as a sport, and they loved this song. And they were older, but they still sang. Right, thank you. Keep the ideas coming. <laughs> uh, but I need to move on with my presentation a bit so that you can get a more um, summarized idea of why I love stories and why Booker Class feels that it is the top priority in language learning and in improving literacy skills. Books are and stories are immortal. They are everlasting and they are truly valuable in our culture, in every culture all around the world. And you, we can see that there are different stories from different cultures and every and each of them are really, really useful, even for language learners, even for, for students from other countries. So books are a cultural heritage. And why? Why is it a cultural heritage? Because they always taught us something. They always gave us some information. Uh, if you think about the cave paintings, that's again a story. It's storytelling. Sometimes it's with pictures, sometimes it's with language, but it serves the same purpose, sharing information, teaching and learning with them. And stories in general, we can say that they are motivating because it's something common. We are used to stories. We tell our stories every day, even if you think about social media or just the beginning of the lesson about our weekend or coming to work, uh, chatting with the colleagues. Stories are meaningful as well. And they provide a natural language, like telling a story, giving information when and where it is set, what happens, how we feel about it. So it is very useful language. And reading and telling stories also improve literacy skills and thinking skills. Uh, it's not only the understanding of the story, 
but also the interpretation of the story, looking behind the story itself, analyzing its meaning, thinking critically about some books uh, and some stories, reflecting on ourselves, um, trying to imagine alternative ways of coping with problems that we have read about. Uh, and these thinking skills, the comprehension, the analysis, the reflection are all academic literacy skills because we learn from them. And when you read stories from other cultures, uh, especially, for example, in the English class, we learn a lot about the English speaking word, even in Hungary. So you, it is um, actually not possible not to acquire some multicultural skills. Uh, and multicultural literacy, how the other people live, what they do, how they feel about certain things, uh, which is extremely important in our global 21st century world. And last but not least, social emotional learning that is actually the cornerstone of teaching in the 21st century, um, because it, it is necessary these days to teach how we feel about ourselves, how we act, how we behave, how we uh, react to certain situations. So these are inter interpersonal skills and interpersonal skills are crucial as well. How we act with others, how people solve problems, how people communicate with each other, how stories can connect people, how events can connect people. And books actually teach you um, huge amount of social emotional skills through the protagonists when the students empathizes with one uh, character in the story it is accidentally which is uh, how these processes work so uh, we can say in general and it wasn't me it was gone Irma Ga gone who said that Literature is a changing agent for students. It can change um, the way we behave, the way we see the world, and we can become bridge builders and our students can become bridges across cultures, across people, and even across problems. And they can solve them much more easily if they gain some experience from books and if they improved some of their skills through the stories. So um, this is why we love stories. This is why we find the, them very important. And this is what we uh, really take into consideration when we write books, when we choose books, and when we decide to work with certain stories and titles and historical events. Uh, what we also take into consideration especially because we are a language learning app and what you as well as a language teacher need to take into consideration is to choose the right book. But how do you choose the right book? The topic and the theme are essential. You need to find a story or a topic that interests your students, that they might find funny, entertaining, engaging, moving, such as I did with this one, because I know it would be a lot of fun. Uh, then you need to take uh, into consideration the storyline so that it's not too difficult, not too complicated to follow. Linear stories are the best when one thing happens after the other and the story advances like this. So we shouldn't go for Game of Thrones uh, at first because it was very difficult to understand even in the first episode as a series. Uh, the illustrations are also crucial, especially for younger students. Uh, if um, they can enjoy the book uh, visually, then they are more likely to continue reading it. You know that sometimes they just want to see the pictures. They don't even want to read the book. So it's great if the uh, visuals are supporting the text and accompany the text properly. And last but not least, language use. Uh, as I said, click clack moo, I had to simplify because it was for native students and my students didn't understand all of the content and I really wanted them to enjoy it. 
So actually, when you open a book, you need to uh, make sure that your students will be able to enjoy it. So it must be like slightly more difficult than their actual language level. And um, that is uh, pr research proven, actually. Uh, so what you can do with books that you find in a print format that are not graded is that you do that you, you do that on the go you read them and you try to explain discuss while reading the book or just write the story for yourself and read it and show the pictures from the story um and then uh, comes the question of graded readers when it comes to language use and we have read a lo lot of research on that and the conclusion is that what graded readers take out of the original text. So what we lose through grading them, through simplifying them, that is gained as an experience for language learners. Because uh, when you leave out something that might be too difficult to understand, then it's not a real loss for a language learner. So actually when you, cut it shorter, make it simpler, you make it more easily consumable for your students and more enjoyable. And they can experience the joy and the flow of reading through graded readers. And the text itself, graded books are actually uh, authentic. So that's not artificial language. So we support graded readers 100%. Of course, if they understand the native content, content then even better. But uh, in my experience, uh, native books are quite difficult in elementary school and in, in with primary students. So uh, these are the four uh, takeaways from this slide when you choose a topic, but I'm sure that the books you used are actually um, relevant and they um, have the same ideas behind. Uh, and how to use stories? That's another question because yeah, you have the book, you might find a story, but what do you do with them? Uh, you actually need to assist throughout the reading process. You need to choose the right story and the right book. Sometimes even your students can help you with the choice and it is really worth a discussion what topics they are interested in, what they enjoy. Uh, then you need to teach some strategies for reading. First and foremost, it's all right if you don't understand all the words. That is the number one top advice, piece of advice I usually share. Um, they say that two or three unknown words a page is the best because then they can acquire those words. It's incidental learning, but it's not too much so that they get lost in the text. Uh, secondly, it's okay to read something twice or three times. It's okay to read something, do not understand and skip it and move on because maybe throughout the story, the whole thing will become more understandable. So it's actually, the point is to make it less stress-free and less about the achievement, it's more about the joy and more about starting to starting doing it, starting reading. If you have any strategies that you use or you know about, please share them in the chat section. Um, and meanwhile, I'm gonna move on. And I have two interesting questions I got or we got from uh, your registrations. Is pre-teaching necessary? I would say that uh, you, you need to really know your students to see if the book will be difficult, if they prefer pre-teaching, or you just look at the cover and you try to uh, teach the basic words that are already at the beginning of the book. Uh, some With some groups, it is very useful. With some groups, it is not really necessary. Sometimes I prefer to stop re uh, stop reading and discussing rather than pre-teaching something because it might just spoil the story, <laughs> but it really depends on the story as well. And the follow-up discussions are again optional because sometimes it's only for pleasure reading. You read the book and that's it. 
did you like it? Yes, no, and then they can go home and maybe if they enjoy it, they can read it again. Uh, sometimes if you have a heavier topic or if it's a more touching story, it is best to have a follow-up discussion. And it really depends on your students how long your reading session is. Um, and you need to assist it throughout the whole reading process. So be there with your students, start the book together, be enthusiastic about it. Don't give them a book and ask them to read it because if you don't start it together, I'm not sure they will persevere. Uh, and yeah, the length of the session really depends on the, um, the proficiency of your students, their motivation and their state of mind and their attitude to reading. So if you start reading with your students and they are not really motivated, then start slow, start small, first baby steps. And last but not least, how to spice up story time. You actually need to focus on communicative tasks, in my opinion, because reading is a, a receptive skill. So let's go productive. Dialogic reading is a wonderful way for that. My colleague uh, just posted um, a worksheet or a guidance for dialogic reading, which teaches about the different questions you can pose, you can ask your students while reading to make the whole reading process more interactive and fun for your students. You can ask them to read the story from another perspective, from another character's perspective. You can ask them to rewrite stories and alternate some elements or whole scenarios. You can encourage them to do some role play. And we have a very good guidance in five or six steps about how to use role plays in one of our blog posts that might be shared as well in the chat section. Or you can ask them to illustrate the story again or do some arts and crafts. And of course, you can go for digitalized content. And uh, that's it for my part. And I would like to give Anna the word because uh, I have a lot, a lot to say, but I don't have unlimited time. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, use the chat. Thank you so much, Kinga. It's uh, it's always super interesting to hear your ideas and suggestions. Uh, I really hope that it inspired you too, uh, dear audience, as much as actually it did uh, inspire us. I really love listening to these ideas and actually I wish I could be a student uh, once again. Uh, and I really hope that your students uh, can also um, take advantage of uh, of these ideas. And, uh, and of the digital solutions that we offer. Uh, I know that many are scared of digital, but I think in a good balance, uh, it can serve you very much. And the ideas Kinga shared, most of them are actually like analog or offline. Uh, what I'm going to talk about now is digital, but you can see how all of this can be very nicely combined. So now uh, let's uh, take a look at Booker class, which is, a uh, collection of books in a digital form. So you don't have to chase every single book one by one. You don't have to order them from all over the world for a lot of shipping costs, but you can just download an app and enjoy it uh, with your students. So what you can see here is again called Booker Class. It is a two-in-one, three-in-one uh, platform. One is the library application that you see on my screen. And the other part is a teacher's dashboard for you so that you can track your students' performance and activity. We also have a teacher's handbook that we provide for you. I'm going to share some information about that as well. This app that you see on my screen is available for Android and iOS mobile devices, so smartphones and tablets, but it's also available for Mac and uh, Windows computers. And we listened to your feedback and we created the browser-based version as well. So if you don't have any of those devices or for some reason they are not compatible, then you can always just take the browser-based version and you can read with, uh, with no problem. Uh, as I said, it's a library application that includes thousands or hundreds of stories. And actually today we mark a big day because we reached 1000 book in the library. Uh, so congrats mm -hmm. team. I think we kind of doubled this number in the past year. So we keep uploading new titles uh, continuously. And since every book has around four educational games, we can also say that we have around 4,000 games in this library. 
We offer the content for children between around four to 14 years old. So from kindergarten to around eighth grade uh, and from beginner to intermediate proficiency levels on these six levels. So if you have students who barely speak English, you can absolutely rely on Booker class. But if you have students who are more comfortable, then still you can find stories that match their levels. And what's super important and makes Booker class stand out is that every book is aligned with CEFR, the Common European Framework of Reference, as well as Lexile. So if you use the library to teach English as a foreign language, this is a very good choice also for English as a second language, but even for uh, beginner um, native speakers, you can, uh, you can use it. And, um, and yes, the levels are aligned with the age groups as well as the CEFR levels. I will talk a bit more about the alignment itself uh, at the end when I show you the teacher's handbook. Uh, as for the content, you can see as I scroll that we have a lot of classic titles that your students might know in their own language, for example, because these are really stories that are known all over the world. We have some uh, classics of literature, The Wizard of Oz, for example, Little Red Riding Hood. And we also have some content and language integrated learning, civilizational stories, stories about science. Uh, we have folk tales, myths, and we really, what's very important for us is to make this library as diverse as possible. So really everyone can uh, relate all over the world. And it's very important what Kinga mentioned, we want to raise bridge builders or we want to offer bridge builders. We want the kids to become bridges between cultures, between generations. And we really believe that this is something that we can achieve with these books. Uh, let's take a very quick look at the user journey, and then we will uh, look at some books specifically, why the Booker Library is special. Just so you know about it, as a starting point, the kids have the chance to fill out a placement test, which is powered by Lexile. It contains 30 questions and it assigns the right level for them. They also get to select their interests and favorite topics, so we can offer books to them based on these topics. Uh, and then here they can track their progress and uh, see how they are doing. We also have some uh, great features, for example, the teachers can assign books to their students. This is what can be found under my books. Um, it would pop up here, uh, the kids would see that this is, let's say, a homework, and the offline, fu offline functionality is, I believe, very important, or that's the feedback that we usually receive. Even if you don't have either a good uh, uh, Wi-Fi connection in the school, or simply you do not want to give Wi-Fi to, uh, to your students, then you can rely on this offline functionality. So as long as you have a subscription, you can download these books and reach them without uh, active internet connection as well. As many times as you want. So it's great that once you download it, you can delete it and then maybe download it again. So the whole library is available all the time. I see that we received some questions. Uh, my colleagues are answering it and also... Uh, you can uh, you can send them in the Q and A section. Uh, what is special about Booker Class, referring to one of the questions, is that it targets uh, language learners. That's actually something that's quite unique about it. We know that there are many library apps out there in the market, uh, mainly targeting native speakers. And as Kinga said, native stories could be good for learners. However, it might be too difficult for them, and it might not teach the most relevant or most urgent vocabulary and grammar for them. So graded readers can be a very good solution uh, for them to keep them motivated, yet teach them the grammar and the vocab that's actually needed on their level. And I would also add that Booker class is much more easier to use for student, for teachers because they are ready-made materials. The story is graded, the games after them are language focus with language focus, and there are extra materials as well. So this is about language teaching purely, and you don't have to come up with your own. Um, I mean, you can come up with your own ideas, but we uh, offer a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of help for teachers. Exactly. Let's take a look at the book so you can imagine uh, more what Booker Class is about. And this also 
uh, shows a lot the the difference between some other the reading monster, apps. The Good Giant, Native American Tale. Masha is big. He is a giant. Masha loves people. He helps them. It's winter. It's cold. <laughs> Masha comes. Wood, please. Small, please. Here. Thank you. Fire, please. <laughs> Food, please. Make it, please. People are lazy. Masha has an idea. People come. This is fishing. Fish. Ta-da! This is fire. Ta-da! Goodbye, people. Masha walks away. He doesn't come back. Turn the page for some games. So uh, I think this short uh, book represents very well the other very unique uh, thing about Booker class, which is really in the format. Uh, most of our content is our own IP, meaning that we illustrate them, we animate them, some stories we write, some um, are original or existing stories, and we do have some licensed content as well. For example, we let, uh, we work together with publishers like White Star, who publishes Montessori books, or um, uh, Oxford University Press. Uh, the Peapot series uh, will be also available soon. Uh, and you could see that every single book is like this. It's animated, there is authentic narration, either British or American in most cases, and there is text highlighting following the text. So these features are available in every single book, and they have a very strong educational foundation. It means that every feature is, um, is designed or added in a way that they support each other. So if the kids, for example, cannot read yet, they can rely on the audio support, or the other way around, if they're um, listening comprehension is not very good yet. They can always rely on the text or the images, uh, whatever happens uh, on the picture. Kinga, is there anything to add, for example, for this specific story? Uh, yeah, well, I used th this story for Native American Heritage Month. It was in November and the students really liked it. And then we talked a bit about the Native Americans and how different their beliefs are. And I really enjoyed that uh, discussion with the students. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a lot to say, but I think I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> and it's very important indeed that it's level one. So this is a beginner level. On beginner levels, we have short sentences, the most basic vocabulary and structures. And then as we go higher in levels, this is when things get more complicated. Uh, let's take a look at the games and then I will show you a few pages of the higher level book. This is Mashup. What is he doing? Match the pictures with their shadows. 
So on lower levels, there is slightly easier he games. Goodbye. They are not always related to language itself. He walks away. But still, as the kids move the items, for example, they can hear some instructions or sentences. He fishes. This is actually the reading comprehension part. If they remember the pictures and the activities, if they can recall what, what they saw and what they heard. He comes. He has an idea. And then at the end of the mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Immediate feedback. <laughs> yeah. The bunny is cheering and encouraging the kids. People ask for a lot. Help Masha bring them what they want. I'm not going to do please. all the games, but just so you see how it goes. Fire, please. Food, please. And in the teacher's dashboard, you can track what the students are doing in the library. So I, as a teacher, would be able to see what my student Anna was doing now and uh, how much time she spent in the book, what, um, uh, what books she opened uh, at all, and also how she did in the exercises. Mashup has enough. Teach fishing for the people. Collect the fish. Sometimes we also offer some fun and entertaining games to engage the kids, especially on lower levels. So this one is where they have to collect the fishes. It's just a cute exercise. It's time to say goodbye. Help Masha find his way home. And again, last but not least, something more like cognitive skills to lead Masha home, which I'm... Yeah, I'm apparently going to do until the end. Fantastic. Yeah. So this was a book from level one. The end. And as you could see, it is in the book. The games are in the book. So you don't have to go to another plas platform. You don't have to look for extra ideas somewhere else. And they are related to the story. And actually, they, there's a wide variety of game types that we try to use and we try to combine. So that is, it's not only the multiple choice or the quiz format all the time to keep them engaged and motivated. Very good. Um, so let me show you a book from a higher level. This was level one, as I said, and I would like to show you rock stars of art from level six, which is the other end of our uh, spectrum. Uh, so level one was the uh, easiest, level six is the most difficult, and uh, you will see the difference. Here you can also see the CFR level of the book, it's B2. You can see that the kids can collect 12 coins by reading it, and they can also collect this Picasso badge. And it's totally uh, eight minutes, eight and a half minutes. We're not going to watch the entire story. Rock stars of art. A painter or sculptor is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word rock star. But many well-known artists like Gaudi and Picasso started off in poverty before gaining success. Other rebels like Renmore and Banksy have escaped the law for their work. Keep reading to find out why they are the true rock stars of art. So we have some interactive pages here where there is some information about the artist. Pierre-Auguste Renoir was born in 1841 in France. He was among the first Impressionist painters who married traditional subjects with new techniques. One of the main characteristics of Impressionism is that painters used small, thin brush strokes with detailed colors. The I'm just going to move a bit so you see another page as well. From ranks to riches, he gained recognition in the art world while exploring many different styles. Well, this is actually about Picasso already. <laughs> Pablo Ruiz Picasso was born in 1881 in Malaga, Spain and is now one of the most well-known painters in the world. In 1900, with very little money, he moved to Paris and met the poet Max Jacob. They lived together in a tiny apartment. Max slept at night and worked during the day, while Picasso slept during the day and worked at night. 
In every book, you can also choose to turn off the narration or the text highlighting. So you can customize the reading experience and uh, you can really, you, it makes it possible for you to use Booker Class in many different ways. So you can ask the students to read the book. Uh, you can use it for frontal work and project it and you can read it sentence by sentence or, or you can read it for your students. Uh, they can also just listen to the story and so on. So now I'm just gonna uh, show a few pages and uh, and see how the book goes. And why I like this book is that this is how exactly you can teach other subjects and not only language. Uh, it's a lot of common knowledge. It's important things to know. It's about arts. Uh, but you literacy. can also, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, visual literacy. I was visual saying. literacy. Yeah, very important. And you could see and hear that uh, here the sentences are much longer. Uh, the uh, the narration was also much faster, so it's really for higher level students. And let's just see one or two games, so you can imagine how they are on higher levels. Whose masterpiece is it? Match the names to the pictures. Can God feel free to say anything? <laughs> Yeah, this one is about the reading comprehension. If they understood what the artists were doing and what their style was like, then they are able to match the pictures. So fantastic. Yeah. Do you remember Renoir or Banksy? Group the sentences. This is again a reading comprehension check um, with sentences and also a great idea or a great starter for a discussion. What is the difference between Renoir and Banksy? What is the difference between an artist in the past and a contemporary one? And how art has changed and evolved uh, throughout the decades and centuries? Very good. What do these words mean? Match them to their synonyms or definitions. This one is a vocabulary building activity with um, synonyms and definitions, uh, which is um, actually based on the story and it focuses on fame and uh, famous artists and paintings mainly. So you can also see that the exercises get more and more difficult uh, as the levels go higher. So this was a book from level six, the other angle of the whole uh, Booker class library. And last but not least, let me show you a flashcard set. So we have a lot of flashcard sets that are compiled uh, based on topics and levels, but we also started to publish quite a lot that are uh, related to certain books. And what I'm going to show you is uh, one like that. It's related to the book Colors of My Day, and it's about uh, how a colorful day looks like, what kind of activities you do during a colorful day. Colors of my day. Have breakfast. So you see the flashcards, you can turn them over, they become colorful and you hear the expression. You can listen to it over and over again. Have breakfast. And then you can practice your own pronunciation. Have breakfast. Yeah. Breakfast was not as good as it could have been. Go to school. Go to school. Oh. Yeah. Yes. So these are the flashcard sets I recommend you to check out. And we also have some songs and nursery rhymes in the library, especially for lower age groups. So you can download the app from App Store, Google Play, or from our website. And, uh, and you can reach a couple of books for free. So you can check out whatever you uh, need and you can check if this is something that you could use in your teaching. And before moving on to the questions, let me show you a bit of the teacher's dashboard as well. Um, if I find it. So the teacher's dashboard is a browser browser based platform where you can find a lot of details about the books that we have in the library. Uh, this is very good for you to plan uh, uh, for your classes and to align the titles of the library with any curriculum that you might use. 
So don't worry if you use a specific national curriculum or you use a certain set of books because using the teacher's dashboard, you can mix and match every title to every kind of book and, um, and curriculum. For example, you see the CEFR level of the books, uh, the recommended age groups, the topics of each book, the grammar elements that you find in the books, the accent even. So if for any reason, if that's important for you, you can browse or filter based on that too. And using this search, it's very easy to find the best matching books uh, for you. Let's say colors and shapes for level one and two. So you have these 10 books that you can use then we also have some activity tips. Kinga referred to them earlier that we offer a lot of additional materials. Let's say we have Christmas surprise. You can download this PDF and you can add many other things to your, uh, to your teaching. Kinga, again, I think as a teacher, you can say a few sentences better than I do. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, the main idea behind activity tips was that sometimes you find a good book, but it's uh, too short. We want to do more and it's a great help to have a list of ideas that you can implement into your lesson. Uh, some of these ideas are uh, rather um, reading based activities, some are project based, you have arts and crafts ideas, you have printable materials at the end, uh, some of them are communicative, so we try to give exactly the, the game you can play or the task you can do with that particular book and not just a vague idea or, I don't know, discuss the book. Uh, and you have the instructions and the printables included in the activity tip. So it's a ready-made material if you need, if you are a substitute teacher by chance in a group that you don't really know, or you need a Christmas book, an Easter book, a Ramadan book, or a Hanukkah book, you can look for uh, something in the app and then check uh, what extra materials we have for them, because maybe we can get you covered for 45 minutes or an hour or so. That's very important that one book is not just one book, but it's really a whole session that you can build around it. Some other things in the teacher's dashboard are the statistics which I think are one of the most uh, needed parts. So here you can keep track of how much your students read uh, on a day, how many books were read per day. You can see detailed statistics of them. You can see exactly how many books they finished or they started. Uh, you can see how many books were assigned to them, um, how many exercises they completed in total. And if you'd like, you can export these statistics. This is a question we receive often. And you can see detailed student st statistics as well. This is the account that I'm using. Uh, so what you could also see. And here it gives you a lot of information on your student. You see a list of every book that this student uh, engaged with. So you see exactly if the students are doing what you ask them to do or they are actually reading on a completely different level. Maybe they read more than what you expected or less what you expected. And um, uh, yes, you could also hide levels for your books, uh, for your students. So if you don't want them to reach everything, then you can just hide uh, a whole level. And we can also hide level books for your school. So if you see anything that you don't find appropriate for any reason, or you just don't want the kids to reach it, we can also filter those. Uh, but then here you could see everything the kids interacted with, with many additional information, the total time they spent reading, the number of attempts that they had in the exercises and so on. So you could really nicely keep track of what they are doing in the, in the app and, uh, and if they are progressing uh, well enough. And you can reward them based on the statistics as well, how many coins they collected or how many books they read. This is what I'm doing right now because this is an extra practice homework for them. Exactly. Here you have the coins and then you can give them little stickers or certificates or whatever you would like. So last but not least, let me go to the teacher's handbook that we offer for you. You can download it from our website, but Reka will also share the link with you. 
Uh, this is a very long and very thorough material that our educational team put together for you. It's an ultimate guide for the Booker class experience, and it includes information about uh, the solution itself and the methodology behind it, how storytelling can be used in English teaching. Uh, we also have the level alignment, which is also a frequently asked question that we receive. So every level corresponds to a certain CFR level and the Lexile ranges. I think someone also has this in the registration sheet. So you can take a look in the teacher's dashboard exactly what level covers which uh, age groups and proficiency levels. And then we have detailed lesson plans for two selected books from each level. So this can give you a very precise idea on how you can use Booker class in your classes. And this material also includes some printables. So we don't let you uh, be on your own. Uh, you can absolutely rely on these materials with differentiation ideas, add-ons, even there's self-evaluation. So it really can help you a lot. Yeah, especially if you want to expand one book for a whole lesson, because otherwise it's great for a warm-up, great for a wrap-up, as a reward. So it's not necessarily a whole lesson in my idea. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you find all of these materials on our website and with the links that's shared in the chat. Uh, we would encourage you to, to try out the application and reach out to us if you need any help. We also have a teacher community on Facebook and on LinkedIn where you could join. Uh, we are very happy to have you there. And it's a free community for everyone to exchange ideas, share some best practices. And this is where we also share many of our materials uh, for the first time. And there are also some exclusive materials. Let me see some questions. Uh, if we have any, I think there was a few in the chat box. So the app can be downloaded from our website or from Google Play and App Store. And the students would receive a 10 uh, digit uh, student code to log in while the teacher has a username and a password. And the, sorry, the best thing about it is that you as a teacher can see your students codes. So if they forget <laughs> it, you can give them again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's that's very cool you can even print them out so you can make uh, a little like a reminder sheet for yeah. them uh the classic books it was somewhat answered and uh, victor thank you for answering it too but we do have classic books we have some contemporary uh, pieces civilizational topics some everyday topics that they that helps them in uh, getting around everyday life like shopping cv writing uh the life uh, or work life uh traveling uh, organizing a trip um, and also we have some activity books and songs nursery rhymes and I saw a question somewhere every book is animated it's very important and that's also a big differentiator uh, from some other solutions that every single book has the animations and every single book is created in a way that it supports the language acquisition um, so it's consciously designed uh, the, the speed of the narration the speed of the animations the illustrations, it's uh, it, everything goes through a very strict process so that we can deliver the best uh, quality for your students. Um, this voice recording in the flashcards, you could see that you can um, check your pronunciation, but this is a feature that we would like to add to the books as well, or at least to some games. So it's something on our roadmap uh, and we hope to proceed with this uh, later on in 2023. Level wise, yeah, we go from uh, beginner to intermediate levels from A1 to B2. Uh, levels you could see that but you can also check it out uh, on our YouTube or if you download the app and you can monitor the students actual usage um yes what else the recording will be available for you so you can take a look at it absolutely we use the app with our pre-a1 students in class and they love it thank you so much Krista for the feedback um, good. Do you have any other questions by any chance? Very good. Let me see what else we had. If we had anything in your registration sheet that we could 
talk about? No, I think we kind of covered everything. Great. Uh, anything else that you might want to ask? <laughs> Thank you so much. It was again, such a pleasure to see all of you. Thank you so much for being so interactive, for being here from so many countries around the world. Uh, I suggest that you follow us on everywhere, Instagram, TikTok, we even have TikTok, and you can enter uh, the teacher community on Facebook and on LinkedIn. That's where we post our, uh, our latest materials. That's where we also count on your feedback. That's very important that uh, we really rely on your feedback. And uh, and yes, thank you so much for being here. And thank I hope to see much. you another time later this year. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a lovely day or evening. <laughs>